All right, so this is pretty big news. It seems like kind of daily news at this point, but Kamala Harris continues to surge as poll after poll comes out. We have a new poll dropping from Bullfinch Pollster. Uh, it is a N equals 1000 poll, uh, August 21st, 2024. So what we have right now, you can see these poll numbers currently right here. Harris is polling at 47%. Trump is at 39%, and Kennedy is at 5%. So uh, what we can see is this is a plus 8 margin. That's right, He's she's winning by plus 8 now, I had actually thought that they had actually already dropped another poll, so I was actually looking to compare the Bullfinch uh, national numbers, but what actually ended up happening was they didn't release a national poll. They had actually released some swing state polls, so they had Wisconsin plus 9, Michigan plus 5, Pennsylvania plus 4. These are all on the high end of the numbers uh, for Harris, so um, what's notable here, though, right, is we can see in the previous July poll, they had Trump at 40%, Biden at 35 Kennedy at 11%. So you can see here uh, that this is flipped from minus five to plus eight. So it's a 13 point swing in the direction of Harris. That is an unfathomably massive surge. 13 point swing in, in favor of Harris in this poll from July. This is absolutely insane. And it, I mean, July was just a month ago at this point, but it was likely after the debate when Biden's numbers started to crater uh, post debate. But you can just see how massive this numbers is. And so we know that Kamala Harris, uh, a lot of her support, if not all of it, pretty much is coming from so-called double haters, people who don't like Trump or Biden. Uh, and what we know is there's a lot of the Kennedy numbers that he was getting in the election was just because people didn't like Trump or Biden. And so a lot of them were just Biden. Uh, but Kennedy was eating a lot of Biden numbers uh, because they were you know, disaffected. They didn't like Biden. And so she's been able to so far convert a lot of those people in her favor. So you can see this going from 11% to 5%. And it's almost uh, like a definitely going to Harris's numbers here, as you can see. And Trump actually loses a point. Now, obviously, what's important to note here is, is Donald Trump going to pull at 40, 40, 40% uh, and sub 40% nationally? Of course, he's not. That number is obviously going to grow. So they're probably undersampling some Trump supporters here, I think. Uh, this sum, you know, this sum is only like, uh, I don't know, 91 or somewhere like that. So there's, there's kind of a lot still outstanding. Trump is going to get somewhere around like 46, probably nationally around there. But this is a huge surge. What we want to look at really is when we look at these margins of change, right? So this margin of change here is plus 13 points right here. So voters are clearly really excited for somebody new. Again, I have no idea why. It doesn't really make any material difference politically. And so logically to me, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, voters wanted somebody different. The policies are not going to be much different, but who cares about policies, right? But huge, huge uh, move. Um, also having this, uh, we have a bunch of polls that dropped. So this data for progress poll has Harris at 49% to Trump's 46%. This is plus three. This actually does look like what's probably going to end up happening in the race, most likely. Uh, Trump is probably going to get like 46 to 47 nationally, but I would say Harris is going to probably do better than 49. She's probably going to get 50% nationally, at least, I would say. Another thing we can take a look at here, we can take a look at these numbers here uh, in the 538 numbers. So if you look here at the 538 numbers nationally, I had felt like she kind of hit a little bit of a snag here in these numbers. Because she was going up and up and up, but then she kind of fell down here and she was kind of stuck a little bit, kind of in the same pedal for like uh, like 10 days or 7 days. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but there's only like 90 days or less left until the election. So, you know, even 10 days is, is you know, more than a tenth of the, that amount of time. So it's not like nothing. But you can see here she's hit a new peak. Uh, she's now at 3.6 points above uh, Donald Trump's. So this is pretty massive. We know that uh, Robert F. Kennedy is going to drop out soon. If you look at the 2020 numbers, Biden was up by 8.4. Um, I think that if Harris is able to get up to 5.5 in the polls nationally, I think she's pretty much guaranteed to win the election at that point. I think she can't lose. And <clears throat> when we take kind of like a, a, a further look here at sort of the recent polls that have been dropped, we can see there's this outward intelligence poll that has Harris plus six, plus four. She's getting over, she's getting 50 or more in both of these polls, which is absolutely massive. The Bullfinch bull poll, which is plus eight, and then this version of theirs is plus five. They also have Weston Stein pulling 1%, which could stem Harris as well if they weren't in the race. Uh, YouGov has Harris plus three in this poll, 46 to 43. Uh, the SoCal Strategies poll has Harris at almost at 50 and almost 50 here. So these are interesting ones because you're almost filling out. You're almost kind of hitting the back wall here. So this is different as opposed to a poll that's like 47, 39 or whatever. 
um, but they have Harris Plus too. And these are sponsored by Republican Party. Now, again, I'm not sure if that impacts the polls, but what I would say is the SoCal strategy polls for Kamala Harris were looking really, really bad, much, much worse than other polls were like the Maris poll. So um, I think that they're kind of like biased against Kamala Harris in that way. Um, but she hasn't been losing a poll kind of in a while. Uh, the last poll that she was losing was this RMG research poll. And then you have like this beacon research poll here. So, um, you know, she hasn't been losing a poll in quite a minute. And she's almost she's up by 3.6 points. Um, maybe we can uh, kind of take a look here sort of at what's going on in the uh, DDHQ numbers. So for Harris versus Trump in the nationals, they have 2.6 points. It looks like it's still the same here. When we look at the uh, the orgy poll numbers, so with Harris versus Trump versus RFK, <clears throat> the uh, DDHQ numbers actually has it. You can see here 4.8 percent lead for Harris, which is absolutely massive, almost five points. Now we know that uh, Kennedy is going to drop out, so uh, that kind of changes it. The 538 is is an average of the two, so that's how they get. I think the 3.6 is like 4.8, and then that, and so it kind of somewhere in the middle, somewhere around there. Um, even though that's probably not going to give you like that exact number. So, oh, well, it's 2.6. Yeah, so it'll be some midpoint between the two. So that's how they get like the 3.6 number. So she's doing better in the national polls, but we don't know how that would impact. Kennedy's at 3%. He's going to drop out. So we're going to have to kind of figure out what ends up going on there. Uh, but I think that the impact he'll make is definitely is going to be in the favor of Trump for sure by maybe like 0.7 or a point or so or something of that nature. But I think it'll be fine and it'll largely depend. The national numbers won't be super important. We kind of just have to look at the correlation of like, hey, if you're kind of around five points nationally, you should be poised to, uh, to be victorious. But I think it won't be anything where it's like, man, like Kamala just can't handle it or she won't be able to win. Um, so this is the outward poll. So they have for the general election poll, they have a plus six in the uh, uh, threesome poll here. So it's 49 to 43 to seven. But then once it's a head to head, they have a plus four. But what's really crazy is she's actually gaining. She's getting 52 percent, which uh, Biden, I don't think, got 52. I think he got 51 and some change, I think, was the numbers that he actually actually gotten. And there's this uh, pollster and bold. I had never even heard of them before. But 2060, uh, 2696 likely voters. This is 815. Harris is up by four. So there still seems to be in a lot of these polls, there's a lot of people who have not decided yet. So I think what this tells us is there's a lot still to be garnered out there. Uh, there's a lot of double haters still, I think like 30 plus percent of them who are still undecided on who they're going to choose. So Kamala Harris still has a lot of people to grab. And I think that ultimately what's going to happen is the election is probably going to come down to, okay, who is able to grab more of those people who have not chosen who they got yet? Because this sum here is, is very low, right? Um, it's barely 90%, right? So there's still 10% outstanding in this poll. So what exactly is going on here? Who is the, who's that 10% going to go for? But what we can see for sure here is a massive search for Kamala Harris's new poll, a 13-point margin from July and Biden's poll numbers. And then we can see that this has reached 3.6 plus, uh, which is a new high for her in this. So she's breaking this. Um, and then she's at five in the RFK Jr. ones. And then she's at 2.6 in the head to head. And then the average is out somewhere to around 3.6. So really crazy stuff. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. Are you excited? Pretty crazy stuff going down.